Wisconsinite is in Green Lake at a training conference for the County Veteran Service Officers Association of, of Wisconsin. We're talking to Carrie Metoxen, who's a Tribal Veteran Services Officer for the United Nation. Carrie, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming in. Good afternoon. What is the difference between County Veteran Services Officers and Tribal? Um, each tribe, you know, we're, we're separate uh, nations. Sovereign really. nations, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and uh, so we, we um, decided years ago that Native veterans weren't represented or filing claims um, with the VA. We had a, a tribal uh, member that was uh, a claims officer in Milwaukee, yep. and he noticed that Native veterans were not filing paperwork for their disabilities. So that's actually how the offices in the in the tribe started. He he. Uh, we started out in Oneida being the first uh, veteran service officer. Uh, now we got eleven tribes, eleven veteran service officers. Uh, they're not. Uh, uh, we're tribal TVSOs. They call us instead of CVSOs. Uh, same credentials. Uh, we're accredited just like the CVSOs. We do the same paperwork as the CVSOs. The same job as the CVSO. Um, but I would say out of the 11 tribes, probably five are really proactive in the TVSO world. Why do you think enrolled tribal members were not signing up for some of the VA benefits and going to, some, to people like you? Um, they may have applied years ago to World War II veterans, Korean War veterans, mm -hmm. and they were denied. Oh. And so no means no. So they thought, okay. And that was carried down through generations. And they thought that they just weren't entitled to the benefits. When they were uh, really entitled to the benefits, it's just when you follow through with the process. Uh, and that's, that's what we, we've done here now. So how do people like you try to do outreach to some of the younger veterans saying, we're here, we want to help you. There are programs out there that would benefit you. Um, I like to believe in our office, um, our customer service is good. Uh, we, we really rely on our customer service. Uh, I have a benefit, uh, veterans benefit specialist besides myself. Mm -hmm. We're both accredited like uh, uh, the, the CVSOs. And we push uh, hard on, on uh, um, doing the paperwork, not just giving them a piece of paper and say, fill this out, we'll see you next week. We'll sit them down, um, talk to them. Um, like previously, uh, the CVSOs, you can always tell when a veteran needs help uh, and, and or look at his credentials on the discharge paperwork and see that uh, okay, man, this, this guy meets the, the requirements for uh, 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 certain entitlements. And as a result of outreach programs like that, what percentage of veterans in, who are members of the United, uh, Oneida Nation are coming to see you and getting some of these benefits? Uh, yeah, once in Indian country, once you get one uh, award, you win one, one uh, award, uh, uh, which is a favorable rating decision, mm -hmm. uh, word the mouth spreads like wildfire. Word you spreads. Know. Yeah, okay, that we know what we're doing then. Um, yeah, then, uh, then we get our clients to come in there. Can you talk about some of the cultural differences that affect the way a veteran approaches the benefit system in the uh, tribal context, sir? Um, each tribe we have our own uh, uh, powwow, um, and then there's one at Indian Summer, in, in the Summerfest grounds in Milwaukee, um, and that is like our our, uh, our cultural event, our family reunion, if you will. Uh, we'll have family come back from all over the country to, uh, for the powwow, and at our powwow, our veterans actually start off the powwow. They do. They, 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 they initiate lead. it. They lead. They, they lead do. the way for all the dancers to come in. We, we, it's, um, we just did Indian Summer last month, and it was probably 40 veterans with flags, um, Eagle Staffs, uh, the American flag, tribal flags that led the way for all the dancers from all over the state. Um, uh, and uh, unfortunately, a um, lot in our regalias, uh, a lot of them are eagle feathers. And uh, if an eagle feather comes off uh, uh, somebody's regalia, Mm -hmm. um, the powwow stops right there. Everything stops. The, the, you know, they just stop the whole event. Uh, no pictures are taken. There's a ceremony that's done to cleanse that fallen feather. Um, usually a veteran, a combat veteran, picks up that feather and will do a ceremony, um, uh, a dance for that feather. Uh, once that's done, that feather becomes that veteran's property. 
He can either give it back to the person that dropped the feather or uh, he can keep it for himself. And then uh, um, at Indian Summer, uh, um, we had a uh, Vietnam veteran. Uh, he told his story of what happened to him in Vietnam um, that qualified him for as a combat veteran. And, and usually it's a sad story. Um, there, there's something very dramatic in, uh, that happened. And in the VA world, they call it a stressor. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, once that's done. Um, what are the most common needs of Oneida Nation veterans who come to see you and, and your assistance, sir? Um, we have a good PTSD program. Okay. Um, PTSD slash um, uh, ALDA issues, but mostly PTSD. Um, at, at, our, at our, our reservation here, we have our own, our own behavioral health staff with a couple board certified psychiatrists, you know, psychologists, um, uh, psychotherapists. We probably have 14 psychotherapists. Mm -hmm. So we can refer them to our behavioral health to get that counseling that needs to be done. And um, uh, we actually have, uh, we run a program in Oneida on Monday evenings. We have a group of about eight veterans that meet uh, religiously with uh, uh, a psychotherapist and a, a AODA psychotherapist. They facilitate the meeting. And uh, these guys are all, all uh, PTSD. Uh, we have a uh, um, couple of Iraqi veterans and uh, probably about uh, six, six to seven uh, Vietnam vets. Are they able to get help with PTSD issues locally or do they have to go to a regional med medical center? Uh, they can get help locally at our, at our behavioral health staff. Okay, but, since you have a staff of, I think you said 14? Yeah, so this, but in the VA world, when you do a claim for PTSD, you actually have to see one of the VA psychiatrists also. You do. Okay. You have to see one, yes. Tribal members are members of sovereign nations. Why is serving in the U.S. military a cultural value in, in, in a sovereign nation, members of a sovereign nation? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's kind of interesting because um, I come from a big family and every one of my uncles served in the military. It was every one of expected my uncles, and Every one of my uncles served in the military. And in Oneida, we go back to the, to the Revolutionary War, you know, we sided with Washington. So in every war that's ever been, um, in Oneida, we have had uh, veterans uh, participate. What about your own service? Um, I'm 20 years active uh, duty Air Force. Um, went to Desert Shield, Desert Storm in the 80s. Uh, retired in 2000. Um, love this job here. It's, it's just uh, uh, one of the best jobs I, I never thought I'd be doing, but it, it is very, very gratifying. What's the most satisfying, satisfying part of your job? Um, I had gotten a Vietnam veteran. Um, when you file a claim today, a decision may not be made for three years. Three years. And, but you're on the books from today. Mm -hmm. So he got a retro check, a back pay check, and, and his check was $418,000 back pay check. And, and, and you had been his champion for how long? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it, was, it took us years. He'd rather have his health. He yes. cannot enjoy it right. because of his health. But um, it, it, it just helps make life a little bit more easier. And he just, uh, uh, he actually, when he came in, it's funny, he gave me a buffalo hide. He did. <laughs> and, Is that after he, he received after the check? After he received it, he, he But it's important it. to note that that didn't restore his health, but it was no. a recognition yes, of his yes, disability. Yes, yes, yes. He went and bought a brand new house, uh, a car that he could get into easily. And uh, How long a fight was that, Karen? Ah, it was probably four years. Four years. Four year fight, yes. Okay. Can Native veterans seek out a TVSO even if they are from a different area or tribe? Oh, sure. Um, um, CVSOs, they all work for their counties. So a county exec may say, we only work with our constituents. That's who you can work with. Um, as TVSOs, you know, we can work with any veteran. And in our office, um, the majority of the offices, the Menominees, the Ho-Chunks, mm -hmm. um, uh, Stockbridge, Mohicans, and Mole Lake, we're very active in the um, uh, VSO world. Um, I would say that we all, any veterans of, you know, a veteran's a veteran. 
He comes in our office. I don't care where he's from. We get phone calls from Arizona. We get phone calls from Nebraska, uh, from Oklahoma. Um, we can actually uh, legally represent those veterans. Fascinating. Carrie Metoxen is the Tribal Veteran Service Officer for the United Nation. What did you do with that buffalo hide? <laughs> did you put it up in your home? Uh, my wife doesn't like it. I have a big lodge room, okay, with okay. a fireplace and everything. Yes. And, and uh, she don't like it, so I have it uh, um, sitting over a, a, a workout machine right now. I understand. But it was but, a, but I do put it out in the summertime when my grandkids play on it. And it was a recognition of how much you helped that one individual. It's very, very good. Thank you, Carrie, for sharing your anecdotes and your experiences. Thank you. Thank you.